Vandekamps, the fish that catches people. Take a delicate, tender, flaky fish. Puff it up with a light coat of tasty batter. And what do you get? A fish that catches people. Oh, that looks so crispy. Yes. Crunchy. Yes. And smells so good. Yes, indeed, madam. Uh, caviar, uh, truffles. Oh, uh, no, dear. It is gourmet popping corn. <laughs> right. It pops bigger and fluffier than regular popcorn. Most every kernel pops. And you can pop all of this for about the same price as two bags of chips. Call my broker. We'll corner the market. Pop my gourmet popping corn tonight. It's the best. Or my name isn't Orville. Hello. Corner market. Redenbacher. Natalie Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Right. I'm delighted to be here. I love to go to new places. Terrific. Can I offer you a drink or something to help you relax? Oh, uh, we've got better. all kinds of things. We have Tang and uh, Nestle's Quick, <laughs> Ovaltine. What do you feel like? Um, all of those are too mild for me. I like something really very strong, like Hawaiian Punch. <laughs> Play-Doh. That's not for me. I only like real dough. You know that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Howe. We only use Monopoly money. Now, who is that? I've seen that young man's face before. Of course. It's William Williams, the poet. I knew it. I saw his picture in the Review of Literature. I said at the time, that sensitive face, that bone structure. It's bony, all right. Excuse me, I've got to meet that poet. If only I had loved your flesh and careless gleaned love where it fell, it might be I could live afresh and love as lightly and as well with little more to tell. My goodness. Who, who are you? Now, where'd you learn that poem? From your own book, William Williams, Songs from the Solar Plexus. Are you bringing out another book of poems, Mr. Williams? That's all I've been doing is bringing them out, and the publishers keep bringing them back. Have you ever thought of having them published privately? On vellum? Morocco-bound? Illuminated? Uh, that's rather expensive, isn't it? Oh, merely a matter of money, if we must be vulgar. Well, if we must, we must. <laughs> By the way, my name is Shaw, Mrs. Eloise Shaw. How do you do, Mrs. Shaw? <laughs> How do you do? Uh, Mrs. Shaw? Yes, Mrs. Shaw. Uh, tell me, do you know Sheila Page? No, no, I... Oh, I know of her, of course. Oh, but you never met her? No, I haven't. Why? Well, she knows you. She told me all about you. I mean, oh. My goodness. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. I think I hear the doorbell. Dolly Madison has come back to Washington to live. You don't tell me. And President Van Buren has already paid his respects to her. Where is Dolly going to live? <laughs> well, naturally, in the house President Madison left her. And I dare say Dolly's place will be the social center again. As it was when she was the first lady. She must be over 60. Oh, I'm sure of it. <laughs> well, I must be running along. I'm so glad I was the first one to bring you the news. I'm sure you are. A millionaire and his wife. We have the stars of Gilligan's Island with us tonight. Jim Backus, how are you? Well, I'm, I'm just fine, Alan. Uh, this is uh, my wife on Gilligan's Island. You see, I can't get away from a wife wherever I go. <laughs> yeah, lovey. lovey. Lovey, no less. Lovey. Penny yeah. calls her Jim's other wife. How does it feel to be such a, play such a fluttery character when you're really such a solid citizen? Oh, do you think I'm a solid citizen? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you only just met me. Is, it, uh, is this really a character part, or is it kind of a natural part for you? A part of it's natural. Part of it's what goes on inside of me, and I don't show it most of the time. And the other part's a character part. I see. Well, you are delightful in Gilligan's Island, and you're going to be in color. Yes, starting next month. All your clothes and everything are going to be in color, and the, what a funny comedy it's going to be for another second season. Good luck with your second Thank season. Thank you. The password is pastry. Oh, you're going to use those glasses all night, huh? Well, of course. That looks very, it's very much in character. If I wore real glasses, I'd look intelligent like you. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, ten points. Let's see if you can get dick. Cake. Cookie. Cake, cookie. Nine points, Jim. Pie. Apple. <laughs> no, bless you. <laughs> Eight points, Natalie. Uh, puff. Pastry? Yes. Yes. Very good. Anybody believe that she's as feather-headed as she acts she like is a very well. The yeah. password is peak. You have it? Yes. I'm fascinated with those glasses. All right. See if you can get Dick to say that word for ten <laughs> points, Natalie. Uh, 
Uh, mountain? Peak? Yes! Well, Mr. Friday, how's the rehearsal going? Having trouble? Yes, it's the second act, Mrs. Shaw. The second act? Dear me. I must admit I didn't quite understand it, but I thought it was lovely. Was it bad? The local critics seem to think so. Well, it was most impolite of them to say so. We shouldn't bring plays to this town anyway. I never did like New Haven, except for those Yale boys. <laughs> They're nice. Doesn't William look elegant? Stand up straighter, darling. That drape is no good if you slump. Mrs. Shaw, please, we're trying to rehearse. Really? Is there anything I can do? No. no. Oh, goodness. Come along, William. Let's go someplace where we can watch. <laughs> the password is snob. Uh, ten points, Natalie. Uh, see if you can get Dick. Snooty. Sneaky? Snooty, sneaky. Natalie Schaefer, you look wonderful. Thank you. You must go to the markets, shopping. People say, oh, that's that lady in Gilligan's Island. Is that right? Yes, and it's very comforting to know that after all these years, they still recognize me. Oh. The show's been on so long. How long that show's been on? Uh, since 1965. 65. But Jim Backus, oh. God, what a great guy he is. I mean, really. I'm glad to hear you say that. I cause... love him. He's ill right now, isn't he? He has a Parkinson's disease. Is that it? I don't know, really. Is it? You don't know? I don't really know. But anyway, he, he, he was wonderful. Uh, the first time I was ever kissed in my life was when Catherine Cornell was directing Romeo and Juliet. Uh -huh. And it was uh, the girl who was supposed to play Romeo got sick and Cornell went in. And by that time, I was madly in love with Cornell. Everybody was madly uh -huh. in love with Cornell. And when she kissed me, I dried up completely. I couldn't speak. It was the first time I'd ever been kissed, and I didn't know it could be such fun. And uh -huh. that was when I started wanting... Well, I started wanting to be an actress, if you want to hear about it, when yes, I was I a do. little girl. A little girl. A little girl, I found. You could get everything you wanted by acting. And when I couldn't get what I wanted any other way, I'd have a tantrum and shriek uh -huh. and yell on the floor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And my family... And then I lied a great deal, because I was always pretending to be somebody else. How nice. I always say Thanksgiving wouldn't be Thanksgiving without turkey. Is that so? What would it be? Where's the bar? Oh, Miss Michaels, wouldn't you like some turkey? Good heavens, no. I never eat on an empty stomach. I had an unhappy childhood, so it was rather fun to be somebody else. It is fun, and you're getting paid for it. <laughs> I didn't get paid for it then. And you've been doing it for many, many years, Miss Natalie Shea. Yes. Haven't you? I did uh, 25 years on Broadway. On Broadway? And then I did 28 motion pictures out here, where they brought me out, okay. and then... Tell me about MGM. They brought you out. I mean, Louis, uh, Louis, Louis B. Mayer? Mayer? Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Well, I was playing in Doughgirls in New York, which was a very successful play, uh -huh. directed by George Kaufman. And uh, I was brought out, and they let me go just to come out for the one movie. It was very exciting. They offered me a lot, $1,000. Oh, my God, $1,000. I never heard of such a thing in New uh -huh. York. We didn't uh -huh. get that. And they put me up at the Beverly Hills Hotel, and they wanted to sign me for a long-term contract. Uh -huh. And as I was in love, I didn't want to sign. But Mr. Mayor said, this is kind of silly, you know, because you, you're a lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are very few ladies out here, and there are a lot of parts for you, yes. and we can give you great parts. And why don't you want to? I said, I can't sign. I'm in love. He said, so what has that got to do with it? Well, I said, well, he lives in New York. Uh -huh. well, Mr. Mayor said, so we bring him out here. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, I don't think that's possible. His wife wouldn't let him go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mr. Mayor said, I thought you were a lady, a married man. Uh -huh. I get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Who's your sweetheart? Oh, oh well, well, Harry, you see, it's, it's, uh, oh, hello. Yes, it is rather dramatic, isn't it? But really not out of the ordinary. Oh, it serves me right for being a traveling salesman. The tired businessman returns home unexpectedly, and while not exactly finding his wife in her lover's arms, still... Well, well, I thought you were in Youngstown. Do you offer that as an excuse, or just to carry on the conversation? I'm not offering excuses. I gave that up after the measles. I love him, and he loves me. How do you know? I told him so. Who is this man? Does it matter? No, I suppose not. Only I'm a little curious to know the sort of type you seem to prefer to me, that's all. Oh, well, he's coming right over, so your curiosity will be gratified. Good. That'll make three of us. 
just enough for a game of cutthroat bridge. But I don't like bridge. Someday you'll go too far. Oh, Harry, you're not angry, are you? Come in. Hello, darling. My husband came home. Goodbye, sweetheart. Where are you going? Yeah, I, forgot, I, I, I forgot my morals. I didn't think I needed them today. I'll be back in a minute. Come back here. I've told him everything. He wants to meet you and see what you look like. Yes, I have a feeling no matter what, what I look like, he'll want to change it. Goodbye, I'll see you later. So you're the man. Why, yes, that is, I mean to say I was, but I've, uh, I've turned over a new leaf. I'll see you in Youngstown. Don't go out that way. They think, they think you're coming in. Sit down. Huh? You mean me? Sit down. Now, you sit there beside him. What are you going to do? Sit down. Sit down. Oh, you're both making a grave mistake. You look rotten together. Well, uh, maybe it's because we've, uh, we're not used to this position. Probably not. My wife tells me that she loves you. Well, that's, that's very nice for her, I'm sure. And that you love her. Well, that's nice of me, too. Well, do you realize that I love her, too? That makes it unanimous. Well, you don't think I'm going to let you get away with this without a licking, oh, do you? Say, talk your side, talk your side. What chance has a little runt like you got to lick a great big handsome guy like me? What are you going to do? I'm going to whittle him down to my size and then lick him. Not on my new rug, you're not. Oh, now, wait a minute. Let's not make a show of ourselves. Let's, let's argue this thing out. As a matter of fact, it's all your fault anyway. By rights, you ought to be in Youngstown. If you were, we'd all be better off. You two might be, but I wouldn't. Nobody is better off in Youngstown. Anyway, I missed my train. Well, you might have telephoned and given me some warning. Certainly. Well, I won't give you up because I love you. And I won't give her up because I love her, too. Well, while you two boys are talking it over, I'll go out in the kitchen and cut my finger on a box of sardines. Box of what? Sardines. <laughs> you two. Oh, I'm sorry I spoke. What do you know about fish? Everything. I'm fish-minded. Yes, I noticed that. What kind? Every kind, from whales to minis. What kind of a fly do you use to catch a mini? You don't use any. You suck them up with a sponge. Right. A member of the fishbowl rollers of Tasmania? Yes. I'm the president. Brother. Would you like to go fishing? Would I? You know a good place? Did you ever hear of the Atlantic Ocean? No, I never did, but I'm willing to try anything once. Let's go. Hey! Where are you two going? Fishing. And what about me? Can you imagine that? She, she puts herself before a fish. This is no time for love. When the fishing season is over, we will return and pick you up where we left off. Now, you look here, you moth-eaten mollusk. I've had to listen to you about fishing three times a day. On Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and all day Friday. I've been so fed up with it, I have scales on my insteps. Then, then this big love comes into my life. And you've got to go to work and make a sucker out of him, too. Oh, don't be silly, Daisy. I was a sucker long before I ever met him. Leave this yeah. house, you, you worms. Worms? Worms? Don't forget the bait. You, you ruined my life. We better go. She'll be getting sarcastic next. Give me by Bayside, 820. Yes, please. Is this the aquarium? I'd like to talk to Mr. Gill. The head fish feeder. Mr. Gill talking. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. This is Daisy. I forgot to ask you a very important question yesterday. Now listen. Do you like fish? You ever mentioned fish in my... Sweetheart, those words are music to my ears. Come right over. Oh, Mother, this is the first time I've ever had love made to me that didn't sound fishy. Speaking of fish, where is your husband? Don't argue with me, my boy. This is not a fish story. Don't tell me you caught a trout weighing 18 pounds. Why, I caught one so big I was afraid to pull it into the boat. So I jumped overboard, grabbed it by the ears, and kicked it to death. We came here to get away from girls. Oh, good. Oh, there you are. Thurston said you needed haircuts. Split, man. It's the Barber of Seville. 
And then after um, the series that I was right. in, after Gilligan's Island, I was in another series called The Survivors. That was a great, that was a great And this time I was a crazy woman who wow. escaped from a loony bin. And I love that. Nothing's as good as being crazy. Is it difficult to do that? No, I love to be crazy. Really? All crazy. Actresses, why do all actresses and actors love that role? That's such an escape. Most of us are crazy inside. Anyway, we uh -huh. wouldn't be actresses. I love it. We the like password you. is masculine. Natalie, 10 points. Feminine? Masculine. Yes. Oh, I love to play drunks. Drunks. Yes, and I love playing comedy. There's so little, you know, really seriously. Uh -huh. There's so little laughter, and it's wonderful if you can make people laugh. Right. You were you know? married to one of America's great actors, character actors, I would say, Louis Kelhern. Yes. Tell me about it. Well, he was a, a wonderful actor, a wonderful person. I was his third wife. Uh, he had an alcohol pro alcoholic problem. Yes. He did everything he could to lick it. We had wonderful times in our marriage. It's a very strange disease. And I couldn't get him to go into AA. He went to doctors, to psychiatrists, but AA he didn't go into. In those days, religion was very important, and they talked about God a great deal. And Lou was an atheist. He was an atheist? Yeah. Never believed? No. So he would not go into AA. How did you handle that, Natalie Schaefer? Because you're, you're a very spiritual lady. Yes, but I was, he got me to be an atheist, too. He did? <laughs> did he really? Uh-huh. Atheists don't have holidays. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this atheist had holidays. <laughs> Come along, Poo Poo. Here we go. Champagne for eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, lovely oh, darling. Alice, how nice to see you again. Won't you all come in? I was telling Mrs. Prince of Tea only yesterday that the Estes are my favorite Really, Oh, I saw a stretch, Mark. She'll end up with Papa. Oh, why do they always have their socks on? Looks like Todd, yeah. <laughs> If you'll excuse me, I must pee. Did you enjoy doing that show, The Gilligan's Island? In the Island? beginning, I didn't want to do it. I thought, my God, when I read the script, I was in New York. I didn't have to read for it or anything. Right. They weren't able to find somebody they wanted. And I thought, I don't want this. Oh, terrible picture. Terrible idea. And my agent called me. He said, look, they're going to uh, do the pilot in Honolulu. Right. We've never been there. I can get you good money. You go to Honolulu. You have a good time. I agree with you. The picture will never sell. The story will right, never right. sell. And uh, go and have fun. So I did. And I didn't like the part. She was a stuffy lady who said, yes, dear, no, dear, to uh -huh. no jokes, no uh -huh. nothing. Not dressed the way I dressed it later. Uh -huh. So I went to them and I said, Mr. Schwartz, I'm a comedian. Uh, could I dress the part uh, so that when I come on, they know what to expect? And I wore crazy hats with yes. feathers and Love pants it. all the time, yes. and gloves and pearls. And I said, let me do it for two shows. And those two shows, they jumped in the uh -huh. ratings. And after that, they let me do my own clothes, pick them. I mean, so you it, brought that character? Definitely. Shaper, definitely. that character. Definitely. That's what happens in Hollywood. That's what has to happen, I yeah, think. That's what has to happen in Hollywood, because yeah. when do, oh, casting directors look for someone... Thurston, do you think we're having a nightmare? Together with our eyes open? You do play password at Gilligan's Island, huh? Well, it's really Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Natalie Schaefer, Jim Backus, have us. We'd like you to have it. The password is hag. Natalie, 10 points. See if you can get Charles to say that. Woman. <laughs> hag. <laughs> what did you do? No, you can do it with your face, she said. You can do it with your face. <laughs> oh, I just adore concerts. <laughs> I do wish the mosquitoes would stop tuning up and stop the music. They have stopped tuning up. That is the music. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Thurston, then we'd better hurry. They probably won't seat us in the middle of the first act. <laughs> Come on, darling. I wish we could be that lucky that we wouldn't be seated. Here. Oh. Here's the first word. Go. Ankle. Knee. Hand. Wrist. Uh, leg. Joint. Uh, uh, toe. Foot. Yeah. 
Table. Chair. Good. Sun. Moon. Water. Sun. Water. Ski. Drizzle. Rain. Good. Uh, music. Symphony. Instrument. Guitar. Fingers. Piano. Very good. Wrong. Right. Very good. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Everybody seems to be here but Paula Costello. Seems odd to see Mr. Page without her. Eloise. Oh, come now. It can't be any secret that they're seen everywhere together. Not that I approve, but I'm getting used to show people. Paul is helping Barney with his new play. The Guild wanted some changes. But the Guild isn't doing Barney's play. It's doing Hild Gardner's operetta. I ought to know. <laughs> I'm backing it. You had to open your big mouth. William! You say I know you so. Now I know where I met you. At the Pages' New Year's party. You play the piano divinely. Have you ever thought of a concert tour? Privately? Financed? Wouldn't that be rather expensive? Oh, expense is no item. If I can inspire a young talent. All I ask is a bit of gratitude. Some of my protégés have been most ungrateful. William, will you find Barney for me? I think he went home. Oh, William, you know better than that. What do you mean? Where is Barney? Do you really want to know? Eloise. Look. But soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east. And Juliet is the sun. Why, Dolly, I, I had some words to say. Beatrice. Most of us are capable of hating for very different reasons. But all of us are capable of forgiving. Now, we're going to have tea. Oh, Gilligan, I got your wig already. How do you know? Instant hair. <laughs> Put it on, darling. How do I look? Oh, it looks just perfect. Except for one thing. You need a haircut. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. He does need a haircut. His bangs are too long. His bangs are here. Excuse me, Mrs. Howell. Well, I had a bit of a shock when I drove up. I thought something might have happened. Oh, you mean the hearse? Isn't it divine? <laughs> I just bought it. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, uh, Louise Clampets, ma'am. Uh, I'm Jed, uh, Granny, Jethro, Ellie Mae. Uh, Maurice, show these people the door. Oh, no need to put him to that trouble, ma'am. We've seen it when we come in. <laughs> I'm a private investigator. From Los Angeles. Oh, boy, that's a real town. I just love L.A. to death. A new wood chip, lollipop. It's, it's a night, night trip, trip into bed, bed you hop and, and dream away. And the good, good ship, lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you have the smoothest running ship in the fleet. What could possibly go wrong? Shh. That's what the captain of the Titanic said. <laughs> Must be a very good teacher, then. Uh, get set for a, a booming serve. Well, isn't it my turn to hit the poor little thing? You missed the last one. Ah! Don't go away. Don't go away from me. Wow! Oh, he Don't go away. Oh, he's got worse than hair with these nail scissors. <laughs> and please take Delilah with you. I think Bye. we should all give a tremendous hand to Mrs. Thurston Howell, Natalie Schaefer, not only for appearing in Howland today, but for creating the legend of Gilligan's Island. Give it up for Mrs. Howell. Now a trio with a really, really big future. The girls with the, with the new sound, and here they are, the honeybees. You need us. You need us. Like 
like a clown needs a shell like a prisoner needs a cell like a ding dong needs a bell Shapers. Would you do it the same way? Would I do it again? Yeah, the same way I you're doing I would have signed the contract. You would what? If I'd known what I know now, yeah. I would have signed the contract at MGM. You would have signed? Yeah, that's the mistake I made. All the help of the publicity, all the help of the variety of parts, yeah. all the help I would have gotten. Because they put you under a contract at MGM. And they worked to build you up. Build you up. I Lana Turner. Just build they myself up. Yes, I'm not yes. Saying you that. had to do it on your own. Yes, and I never was good about going after anything. It had to fall in my lap. Shaper, are you going to write a book about your life? Everyone's I, writing books. I know Come it's on. a thing, and I tried. You I tried? Got, yes. I got through 80 pages, and then I couldn't remember anything. Oh, darling. Oddly enough, I remembered all the details of my childhood, most uh -huh. of them rather unpleasant, and uh, very little of my life. Really? I wasn't really able to do it. I tried with somebody then, and that was worse because they didn't get me at all, uh -huh. you know? And then I thought, oh, there are enough biographies on them. Eighty pages, that's a lot of pages on that. Yes, sure. but they were, I didn't like them. So join us here each week, my friends, you're sure to get a smile From seven-stranded castaways here on Gilligan Island.